Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome, everybody. Today, I'm looking at the Star Wars Armada Galactic Republic Fleet Starter, released in 2020. For years now, I, like many out there, have been begging and praying for Fantasy Flight Games to make a Clone Wars era addition to Armada, and it's a reality, and I couldn't be happier. Game-wise, Armada has always been really interesting to me. I love the aspects that you could do whatever you want to try and win. You could use upgrade cards to make the ship more fine-tuned to your playstyle, which I really love. But mostly, I am a massive fan of the miniatures. I love these things. So I had this box for a long time. As you can see, it got a little ripped here when I opened it. But, you know, I had to take a break for grad school, and I am back now, so let's get to this review. As we can see with the box here, we have Star Wars Armada, Galactic Republic Fleet Starter. Now, right here is very interesting. It says everything one player needs to play Star Wars Armada. And that's something we have to keep in the back of our heads the whole time I review this thing. Normally, with the Star Wars Armada core set, we had enough for two people to play. You had a Victory Star Destroyer, a Nebulon B, and a CR-90, and it was good for Rebels and Imperial. But now, Fantasy Flight Games is switching it up a little bit and doing these fleet starter sets that give you enough for one player. Now, in a way, I could see how some people might not like that, but I see it as a really good uh, jumping on point because some of the cards were upgraded and this and that. And this gives you everything you need to just jump into the game. And I think that's great for new players. And we're going to see what it comes with in just a few. But back to the box. We have our acclimator right here. Our counselor ships. A couple V-19s flying there. And a cool picture right here. Which looks to be a little bit like Coruscant. It could not be. But I do see circular indentions or trenches I should say. With the cityscape here beautiful looking planet and then we have our miniatures which we'll have a good look at later but turning the box around here you can see a brief write-up and what we get here we could see the battle of coruscant going on right here which looks great everything we get in this set and we can see here assemble your fleet maneuver your ships and battle for victory that's a pretty cool catchphrase there so anyway we have a nice write-up here, which looks pretty cool. Some of the cards that come in a set. And then all our copyright crap and everything on the bottom. So, this box is really cool. I know normally I don't show off the boxes that much, but people seem to be into that. So, I thought I would uh, show off the box just a bit. So, let me get this open real quick and show everybody what we get inside of this box. So, now this is everything we get in the Star Wars Armada Galactic Republic Fleet Starter Set. And we do have a lot to talk about. This is probably going to be a long video because if you're new to my channel, I like to go through everything. I want people to know what they're buying here. And this set has a lot to offer. Now, unlike the original core set or starter set, you do not get enough for two people to play. In the original set, you had Imperials and Rebels, and that box set gave you everything you needed for two people to open up the box and just get into the game. This set, and its sister set, the Separatist Fleet Starter, gives you enough for one person to just jump into the game. For example, this is the Republic set. We get three ships, four squadrons, all the dials and tokens we need. We have our movement tool, our range tool, ship tokens, obstacles, and cards. Everything you need to play is right here. Technically, if you went to a game shop and opened up the package, you could just play on the table right then and there. So that's a huge plus. Uh, another positive is now that Fantasy Flight Games is transferring all its Star Wars power to Atomic Mass games, we are starting to see little upgrades here and there. And the one I've seen the most progress in is the cards, which we're going to look at later. But one thing I do want to point out is, for all of you players of the old Armada, which only had Imperials and Rebels, 
The cards were all over the place. We had baseball sized cards. We have tarot cards, which were a pain they find holders for. And also miniature cards for upgrades. Now those are all gone. Everything is one standard baseball size card size, and I love it. And actually, Armada did release a upgrade kit that gives you upgraded upgrade cards for all of your ships, which uh, we will look at sooner or later. I do have that set. So all in all, those are two very strong positives for this particular set. And moving forward, the card uh, situation is a huge plus. Because now I don't have to buy four different card holders and this and that. Nope, I could just go to Target or Walmart or any online retailer and just buy normal baseball card holders for a binder and I'm good to go to store it. Now, one more thing I did want to mention is this set also comes with a massive rule book. And look at that art, beautifully done. This is great. And I did scan some pages, so we'll look at this later on in a review. So if you're new to my channel, what we're going to do is take a look at the dials and tokens, the rules, the cards, check out those squadrons, the ships, put them on their stands, compare it to some other vessels, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. And now it's time for my favorite part of these videos, the dial token roll call. First up, 10 command dials, 8 speed dials, 3 ship tokens, which are double-sided, 11 defense tokens. 20 command tokens, 12 raid tokens, 8 objective tokens, 12 victory tokens, 6 pass tokens, 6 ship ID tokens, 2 flagship tokens, 8 squadron ID tokens, 2 focus shaft tokens, 1 main flagship ID token, 3 main ship ID tokens, 6 round tokens, four setup area markers, one initiative token, three asteroid obstacle tokens, two debris obstacle tokens, one space station obstacle token. Up next, we have our range ruler. Now this is double-sided on this side. This is for distance, usually used with squadrons. So that's really cool. On this side, this is our range side. So this is used when capital ships battle against each other. So we have close range, medium, and then long range. As you can see, the closer you get to your enemies, the more dice you get to roll. So a very useful tool. And up next, we have our maneuver tool. Now I like this thing because it is plastic. It is not cardboard at all, except for these little number sections going down. Now this is pretty cool because this is how we move our vessels. For example, we'll use a counselor ship here. Pick it in the port like so. You can see how it fits into the base. And say you want to move one. And say we get a turn like so. You can actually take this ship. Put it like so. And just like that, that's how you use it. So it's pretty cool. It's a nice little tool. And uh, I really do enjoy this. Before this set came out, I actually went out and bought another one of these. I think they were about 8 or $9 extra. But if you have more than one player... These are useful so you don't have to keep sharing different tools. So the fact that this set comes with one is pretty cool. And finally, nine dice. So that does it for all the dials and tokens. So now let's take a look at the cards. So now for the cards, let's start with the new ship cards. These were upgraded for the new expansions and I dig them. They're the same size as an upgrade card or a squadron card. You know, a normal baseball card size. So first up, we have the Counselor Clash Charger C70, and it's not too bad. It has four hull, one black anti-squadron die, one command, one squadron, and two engineering. We can see the two shields for most of the arcs, one at the bottom, and then some great dice with the red and blue. Looking good, and we can see it could go all the way up to speed four, which is pretty nice. Now, the cool thing about these cards is... They are double-sided, so if we look at what's underneath of this, we could see that now it's the rest of the card that we would normally have. So we have the name at the top, the upgrade bar on the left-hand side, and then we have the points on the right-hand bottom corner. So pretty awesome, and I love the artwork here. Great stuff. Next up, we have the Counselor Class Armed Cruiser. 
This again has four hull, two blue anti-squadron dice, one command, one squadron, two engineering. Moving down, we have two shields for most of the arcs, one in the aft. And then instead of being blue and red, we have blue and black for the fire and arcs with the dice. So that's pretty awesome. Again, we could go up to speed four, looking good. On the other side, we have our name at the top. On the left hand side, we have our possible upgrades that you could attach to the card. And on the bottom right hand corner, we have our points. So really cool. Up next, we have the Acclimator 1 class assault ship. Seven hull, two black anti-squadron die, three command, three squadron, and four engineering. Moving to the bottom, in the forward, we have four shields, and on the sides and aft, we have two, and this has a lot of red and black dice, which is awesome. For the back of the card, we have the name at the top, upgrades on the left-hand side, and total points on our bottom right-hand corner. Love that artwork. And for our final ship card, we have the Acclimator 2 class assault ship, seven hull, blue and black anti-squadron die, three command, three squadron, and four engineering. We have four shields in the forward, and two on the port and starboard and aft, which is pretty nice. Now, for our firing arcs with the dice, we have a lot of different stuff here. We have red, blue, and black for the forward, red and black for the port and starboard, and red and blue for the aft. So pretty interesting. For the back of the card, I love this photo with the open circle fleet emblem on there, looking cool. Again, the name at the top of the card, possible upgrades on the left hand side, and total points that this ship is worth on the bottom right hand corner. So that does it for all the ship cards, so now let's take a quick look at the squadron cards. So first up, we have the V-19 Turret Squadron. I love the artwork, and I really am a huge fan of this particular type of vessel. Up first, we have the name on the card. Below that, starting from the left-hand side and moving to the right, we have our speed value of 3, hull of 5, anti-squadron dice, which includes blue and red, and then we have our attack dice, which is just one black die. So all in all, it's a pretty decent fighter. Now, as always, if you would like to pause the video and read the rest of the data below, by all means, go right ahead and continue when you're done. For our second squadron card, we have Axe, which is also a V-19 turret squadron. We have a speed of three, hull of five, anti-squadron die of two blue and one red, and one attack die of black. So that pretty much does it for all the ship and squadron cards. So now let's take a look at all those upgrade cards. All right, now looking at those 20 upgrade cards that come with this particular set, as always, I will read the name of the card. And then if you would like to pause the video to read the paragraph below, by all means, go right ahead and continue when you're done. First up, we have Bail Organa, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Clone Captain Zack, Munitions Resupply, Clone Gunners, two Clone Navigation Officers, two Hyperspace Rings, two Swivel Mount Batteries, two Reactive Gunnery, Parts Resupply, Assault Concussion Missiles, Auxiliary Shields Team, Ship Title Navoda B, Implicable, Radiant 7, and finally Swift Return. So that does it for all the upgrade cards that come with this particular set. So now let's take a look at the damage deck. All right, so now let's take a look at the 52 damage cards. Now there are a lot of copies here, duplicates I should say. So what I did was I went through all the cards and I got all the singles and that's what I'm gonna be looking at. So up first, we have Compartment Fire, Crew Panic, Blinded Gunners, Calm Noise, Life Support Failure, Damaged Controls, Injured Crew, Faulty Countermeasures, Power Failure, Ruptured Engine, Targeter Disruption, Shield Failure, Projector Misaligned, Point Defense Failure, Thruster Fissure, Coolant Discharge, Capacitor Failure, Thrust Control Malfunction, Damaged munitions, depowered armament, disengaged fire control, 
and finally structural damage. So that does it for the damage cards, so now let's take a quick look at the two reference cards. So for the reference cards, we only have two, but they are double sided. So for the first card, we have attack resolution, commands, defense tokens, and finally defense tokens. And I have to admit, I really do like these. You know, if you're a player, you don't want to lug around the rules everywhere you go. These are quick little cards with little snippets of very important rules, and hence why they're called reference cards. But these are really cool, and I do recommend them. So that does it for the two reference cards. So now let's take a look at the 12 objective cards. Now, objective cards are really cool because it gives two players or more the option to play a different scenario. So let's get started. First up, we have Open and Salvo, Most Wanted, Precision Strike, Advanced Gunnery, Contested Outpost, Fleet Ambush, Fire Lanes, Hyperspace Assault, Superior Positions, Intel Sweep, Dangerous Territory, and Minefields. So that does it for all the cards in this set, so now let's take a quick look at the rules. Now one of the cooler parts of this set here is that FFG gave us a beautiful rule book, which they do with all their expansions. It could be big or small, but no matter if it's Armada or X-Wing, FFG always gives us some sort of reference material or a little pamphlet to explain something that's new with their expansion or how it interacts with other expansions of the past. So here we have this rule book. Now, I did scan some of the pages in here, so they'll probably pop up somewhere in the center here. But on the whole, this is no different than any other book that FFG has given us. The first page is all components, as you can see here. It tells us everything that comes in a set. And every other page is drastic information that's broken down. And we're talking ship assembly, maneuver tool assembly, how to assemble your squadrons. So basically everything that's in this video. And then it tells you how to set everything up. And it goes into painstaking detail, which is necessary. Here we have the objective of the game, playing the game, which is important because, you know, you got to play it. How to use maneuver dials and all that stuff. So again, very important information. And if you do pick this up or any starter set for Armada, I do fully recommend breezing through the rules. If you have a friend that's going to play it with you, that's even better. But uh, yeah, a lot of good information in here. Here we have additional rules, which breaks down little things even more. So the more you read and the more you play, the better you'll get at it. And I think that's obvious. Here we have measure and fire arcs and ranges, which is very important. And we're almost done here. Here we have attacking and how to do that. It explains the dice, defense tokens, maneuvers. So it's pretty awesome. And then we have squadrons which are an important part of Armada. In the beginning, they uh, really weren't, but then as time went on, I know a lot of people won tournaments with uh, bombers and different skills. So never count anything out, because something could become very important later on. And then towards the back, we have a complete setup. Now with this, I think we have about two starter sets per each side, so it's two massive fleets coming together. So that is pretty sick. But then on the last page, we have all our copyright crap. So all in all, this is a nice book. In total, it has about 28 pages or so to it, and I really recommend it. And now looking at the squadrons that we get with the Galactic Republic Fleet Starter Set, we get a total of 12 V-19 turret starfighters, which go into squadrons of three. So in total, you get four sets of squadrons here, and they look great. Now, as you can probably notice, they each come with a stand, and each ship is not painted. Instead, they're all the same color, which is like a dark maroon. All in all, it does match with the other squadrons we have seen with the Rebellion and the Empire. They all had their separate colors, and the Separatists, I believe, are dark blue, like a navy blue, so that's awesome. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these V19 Starfighters off its stand, have a close look, see what we're really getting there, and then we're going to assemble the stand together so you guys can see how they're put together at home. So let's get moving. All right, so here we have the V19 Turret Starfighter close up. Now this is very small. We're talking maybe a quarter of an inch at most. And yes, I'm using a tweezer to hold it up and a pen to point to all the major points. So you could definitely see the scale there. So let's get started going over to major sections. We have our cockpit, main body, engine intakes, as well as our thrust nozzles in the back. We have our dorsal wing down here with another engine looking good, side wings, and also laser cannons. So looking pretty good if I turn it to the aft. You can see there is a lot of detailing on here. There's the bottom, you can see all the paneling, looking good. Very nice, I think this came out good for the size. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. On the top, we can see some beautiful mold in here. Look at that, that's awesome. For the size, guys got to admit that, beautiful. And I've seen people paint these. They look amazing. All in all, a great looking ship. So now let's take this and assemble it onto a stand. So now that we went over to V19, let's assemble them onto the base. So here we have a nice acrylic base. You can see it has an odd shape. Everything will make sense in a few. Right here we have sort of a half circle cut right there. That's for the base of our pylon. So let's get start assembling. First, we have our activation slider. That goes in that little trench there, looking good. Then we have our squadron disc. Now this side is for the normal V-19 pilot, and the other side is for our special pilot we get with this set, Axe. So for this one, we're gonna go with a normal squadron. So you're just gonna line it up like so, it doesn't really hold on to it. Then you're gonna grab your base to the pylon. And for me, this is a little tricky at times because you have to match up that bottom of the peg with the half circle and push it in and then it will lock. As you can see, it goes through and it's held in with friction. So after that, you could take any one of these pieces, peg it in like so. And now the fun part, grab your V19s. And there is no half circle or anything like that. These guys can spin. So you could put these in any type of formation you want. And that's pretty cool. And if you're good at painting, like I mentioned before, you could paint these bad boys up and make it your own. But just like that, everybody, you're good to go. And now looking at the ships, here we have our Counselor Clash Charger C70 Retrofit. Now in the package, we get two of these. They are for the most part identical. These are labeled as frigates. Now, if this ship does look familiar, it was first seen in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Later on, after the time of peace, when the Republic had to go to war, most of their peacekeeping ships, such as this, were retrofitted with turbo lasers, extra shields, sensors, and you name it, and it was added to it. And you can see we do have turbo lasers on the sides, in the back, laser cannons in the front, more turbo lasers, so... It really had a lot going for it. You can see some negative space there by the engines. Looking good. Now, for the size of this particular miniature, it's just about two inches. So it may not sound like it's extravagant, but it goes well with the CR-90s, which we'll see later on. Now, just like in all my other videos, I will go over all the major points, and then we'll get a nice close-up look to see those fine details. So let's get started. We'll go to the aft section. Here we have our three main engines looking good. You can see they are recessed in. Fantastic. Look at the detail. Beautiful. Like I mentioned, we do have some negative space there, which looks awesome. Now, this section is probably one of my favorites. Right here, we have a turbo laser in the back, which if I turn it this way, you can see it looks amazing. And this area right here is comms antennas, dishes, all that stuff. Really awesome. On the sides, we have our docking rings. Looking good. More turbo lasers. And in the front, 
Right here we have our dual laser cannon. Right over here should be our navigation dish, our bridge right in the front. This section right here is labeled as a salon pod. Now this could actually pop off and become a sort of a big escape pod, if you will. In the toy, it's just static though. But this whole section here is able to pop off and shoot off. So that would be pretty cool if they could have put that in here. But for the size, I'm happy with it. On the bottom, we have our escape pods and two more turbo lasers. And a peg for our port right there for our pylon. So pretty awesome. All in all, that's the major points on the ship. I'm very impressed with everything they put on here, and especially how they added the turrets that aren't just one piece. You can see how the barrels are raised up and pointing out. We'll have a closer look in just a few. But Armada and Fantasy Flight Games has not let me down. This is a beautiful ship. So now let's get a closer look. All right, having a closer look, let's begin with the aft section first, the engines, and then we'll move our way up to the front. We can see these beautiful panel lines and little modules here and there. Great stuff. And this centerpiece is probably one of my favorites. You can see some recesses, ray sections. We have our turbo laser, some dishes and antennas. Looking fantastic. Look at all that. That is some awesome stuff right there. Nice. Now, we do have negative space, which is awesome. Really cool. And then we have our three engines. You can see how they are molded very well for the size. We have some recesses. Looking good. Some little modules. Fantastic stuff. Turning the ship to the side, you can see there is molding as well. Looking good. And on the bottom again, similar to the top. Very nicely done. Little different configuration down here. But cool nonetheless. Look at that. For the size, this is pretty damn good. All these little panels are raised up, as you can see. Nice. Now, looking at the engines, if I turn it like this, these two are recessed in. Right there for the intakes. Then we have these little sections protruding out, connecting it to that triangle fin, which looks pretty cool. For our center one, it's sort of built onto the ship itself with some supports. Looking great. Now, one of my favorite parts is back here. Here we can see these molded sections for the interiors of the engines. These like thrust nozzles here. Looking amazing. Nicely painted too. Pretty cool. Now, when you look closer at these, you can see that the nozzle and the engine casing right here there's actually a little bit of recess going on there. It's a little hard to see, but I think you can make it out right here. Looks pretty awesome, right? That's something we haven't seen yet, so that's great. All in all, fantastic job. Really cool, and I loved how the turret protrudes out, and it's not connected. Like, see how these turbo lasers are molded to the body? This one's like freely out there. I like that. Pretty cool. So anyway, we have our two docking rings. Our main body with some beautiful recessed line work here. Beautifully done. I love that. Two turbo lasers, which as you can see are molded to the ship itself. But for the size, it's A-OK. -okay. Coming down the next section here. Let's see if I can get it. We have lots of little doodads and molded sections looking great right here at the tip we have our dual laser cannon which this can swivel but since this is a little model it's basically facing forward so that's cool we have a navigation dish and you can see little details on that beautifully done and again for the size this is pretty amazing for the front we can see a little window for the bridge some nice details, especially in the front right here next to the main pod. Looking amazing. Coming down the side, we have some beautiful line work. Some great angles. And you can tell they put a lot into this. Looking at the bottom. 
We have this great shape here, nicely done. Peg for our pylon for the stand, which looks pretty cool. Again, some nice detail in here. Four escape pods, two turbo lasers, and some great line work again, filled in with the black wash. Nice. And then again, we have our pod, which has some great detailing on here. Very nice, very unique. I like this quite a bit. So that does it for the molds. Now let's take a quick look at the paint. Now this particular vessel has about six different colors. First up is a nice off-white. It's the main color of the vessel. We saw it on the top, the sides, as well as the bottom, which looks pretty cool. It's different than the Imperial Gray and Dark Gray, so right on there. Moving on, we do have that nice Republic Maroon. You can see it filling in all these lines in different areas. Now up close, we saw it is a little sloppy here and there, but when you're standing a couple feet above these on a play area, it just makes them look like they're unique, maybe battle-worn, makes them stand out from each other, and that's pretty cool, but not too bad. Moving on from there, we do have dark gray. Now, the grays are scattered, but we do have some dark gray right here on this antenna, in the back on these two sides, and also for the interiors of the engines. So pretty interesting. Moving on, we do have light gray for the escape pods. It's a little piece right here on the dish. And also the turbo laser barrels right here. So pretty interesting. Moving on from there, we do have yellow for the open circle fleet emblem, as well as the engine glow right there, which looks pretty cool. And finally, we have a nice dark wash, which fills in all these nooks and crannies and really makes the detail of the ship pop and bring it to life. You can see it in the aft section. It got into all these little nooks and crannies. The bottom here filling in all the lines, but the turbo lasers as well. Great stuff. Big fan of this ship. And now for the part of the review that I am very excited for, the Acclimator 1 class assault ship. Now I've been after a miniature of this ever since I saw Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Now, I know the miniatures game, the Starship Battlers, had one, and I believe the uh, Action Fleet had one, but I, I never got it. So, to finally have this ship in hand, it, it means a lot to me. I'm a big lover of this design. Actually, most of the uh, Clone Wars vessels I'm a major supporter of. I think that they're very simplistic. I love the angles. And it leads to what we know in the future. Now, in the Episode 2 film, these were used as troop carriers. Reading a bunch of data and books I have, there was a crew of 700. And it carried about 16,000 clone troopers, including ATTE walkers, LAAT gunships, other dropships. And it was used for orbital bombardment and troop carrying. So it really had a nice versatile use for it, but uh, you know, I guess it sort of faded out when the Venators came in, and also once it turned into the Empire, the Republic really didn't need them anymore. It was more about uh, police in the galaxy in the time of the Empire as opposed to rage and war. So pretty interesting stuff and pretty interesting vessel. I'm just oh. So excited to finally have this. I got a smile on my face now. But uh, let me calm down. Just like with all my videos, I will go over all the major sections of the ship. And then we'll get a nice close-up look to see all the details. And then finally take a look at the paint. So let's begin. Right here, we have our superstructure with our bridge right here. And I love this design. I'm so glad they kept going with this particular design for the Venator as well. So, pretty cool. Now, also, on these sides here, we can see these little modules here on both sides. Those are, in fact, turbo lasers. Now, one of my commenters once wrote, Oh, I don't think it's a capital ship because it has no larger guns. And, well, there they are. You know, and that's not it. These ships actually had point defense lasers, proton torpedoes, 24 laser cannons, and a total of 12 quad turbo lasers. 
Now in here, all we have is six. So where are the other ones? I don't know. I went over this thing with a fine tooth comb. And obviously there's some down here in this trench. And there should be some weapons down here since orbital bombardment, right? But I don't know. That's just the data I have. Where everything is on here, I don't know. These are very big in the films. Not as big as an Imperial Star Destroyer by any means, but they had some heft to them, right? So moving on from there, we have our main hole plating on the top. Looking very good. Very detailed as well. In our aft section, we have some beautiful details here. Looking great. Now, back here... This section right here is basically for the hyperdrive and it leads into the reactor, which is in the center in this compartment moving forward. So pretty cool, nicely detailed. We have our engines, two main engines and two little ones on the sides, looking good. On the bottom here, we have our peg port for the stand. And these two angled sections here and here in the movie opened up. And all the troops and weapons and vehicles would, you know, march in or fly in. So pretty interesting. Now on the sides here, here, and this section here, in the film, these would open up for landing gear, which is really interesting when you think about that. But all in all, that's all the major data I have on this particular vessel. It may be cool, but from what we saw in the movie or shows, we really don't know too much about them. So anyway, let's get a close-up look at this beauty. And now having a closer look, one thing I did forget to mention is that this ship is a little over four and a half inches long. So it's a nice sized vessel. You can see in the front here, a nice unique shape than what we're used to. I like that. Usually with Star Destroyers, it's a curved point. So I like the openness of that. Take a quick look at that. You can see the nice mold in here. Great stuff. But anyway, we're going to start with the bottom of the vessel. You can see all these beautiful panel lines, little recessed holes here and there. Just look at all that. Beautiful stuff. I don't even need to really say anything. This has lots of little doodads here and there. Excellent molding. Nothing is flat on here, by the way. It's not just like an arrowhead. You see the back with these beautiful little lines right here, ray sections. Lots of little pipes, it looks like. Great stuff. Little windows. Beautiful. Now, turning it to the side, you can see how nothing is flat. Everything is coming out to some capacity. And I like it for that. I think it really adds a lot of character to the ship. Just nicely done. You know, sometimes, I know I'm a nerd or whatever, but, uh, you know, when you really wanted something your whole life and you finally get it, it's it's a nice treat to have something in your hand that, yeah, it's not real, but, you know, it's cool to have a model from something that you really enjoyed looking at as a kid or a teenager. I don't know. Does anybody else feel like that? Maybe I'm just weird. But anywho, on the sides here, we have some beautiful molding. Look at all this. Looks like computer parts almost, but fantastic assortment of different modules all in there. And the paint just helps it out by darkening the interior and making all these little shapes just pop. That's amazing. Coming to the side here. Again, beautifully done. This is great. Coming to the aft. You can see all the little doodads in here. Some gray paint back here as well. Actually, these sort of look like turbo lasers. You know, they look just like these. I don't know. What do you guys think? Maybe you guys have data books better than I do. But very interesting. I'm going to have to look into that. But fantastic. We can see some little hoses back here or pipes. Great molding. That is just, whew, I don't even know where to start, you know. I'm really excited just to have this thing and seeing what a beautiful job they did with this. And I can't wait to see 
what they did with the uh, Republic Attack Cruiser. Because if they did such a good job with this, Fantasy Flight Games are just going to blow me away yet again. But you can see for this lawn section here, again, beautifully done. Line work, raised molding, panels. Hmm. For the engines, beautifully done. Great molding here, look at that. And the cool part is, if you look closely, there's some great tiny molding in there. And it's recessed. Same for this. Beautiful. A little iffy with the paint, but I'm going to be honest with all of you at home. I really don't care. I think this is a great looking ship. Just the molding alone on these engines. The attention to detail. It's unmatched. Amazing work. And of course we got our peg port down here. But right here next to the peg port. See some beautiful molding too. Lots of little things condensed together with that black wash. Oh, just looks great. Now we're almost done everybody. <laughs> we got some more panel in here. Line work and raised sections. Looking very good. Black wash doing its thin, making all these lines stand out. And just look at all the detail in the center. Fantastic. Coming down the side. Beautiful. Here again, great. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat is the aft section here and here where my thumbs are. It's uh, kind of protruding out. Now, if you have this at home, let me know if you have the same problem. But, uh, yeah, I guess it's supposed to be closer. But it's sort of uh, not really attached. I don't know. I guess it is what it is. I still love the model, though. I'm not going to knock it. But what are you going to do? But again, beautifully done. Nothing is flat. You can see everything has a nice curve. Excellent. Now for the superstructure area, you can see how it goes up, down, flattens, and then goes up again. That is some great stuff there. I just love the mold. Just the design of this. You can see all the great little doodads all around here. Our turbo lasers going down the sides. It's on both sides. Looking great. We have our next section, which looks pretty good. Got some nice detail in there. The aft looking good. Even going up to the bridge section. Very nice. And looking at it from the front. Pretty cool. Now finally for the bridge section. The window should be right here in the front. But look at that. Nicely done. Very detailed. Beautiful. I really feel like they did a great job with this. Fantastic. So that does it for the mold. So now let's take a look at the paint. Now this bad boy has about six different colors. It's uh, very similar to the counselor class we just looked at. We have off-white, which is the main color. You can see it on the aft dorsal sections also the sides and the bottom looking good i think this one is a little bit neater than the counselor you can see there is some mess ups with the red here but for the most part i'm very happy moving on off the white we do have maroon for the center section here all the stripes we have our circles there for the emblem nothing on the back and on the bottom again stripes nice Moving on from there, we do have yellow for the Open Circle Fleet Emblem. Looking great. And that's it for the yellow. Moving on from there, we do have some dark gray. You can see we have these lines that go around. And also on the bottom. Looking pretty cool. Nice and neat, those are anyway. And then in the back, we have our dark gray as well for the engines. Pretty dope. And moving on from there, we do have blue for the interiors of the engines. The engine glow, if you will. 
looking very sharp. I love that electric blue with this particular paint scheme. I think it really pops more than the Empire, really. And on top of everything, we do have a nice wash. And on this, I think they did it perfectly where it's not covering the actual plates, but it's in all these little nooks and crannies. And you see every detail and everything is popping. And that's what it's all about. You want your paint to work with your miniature. Looking on the side here, everything is just exploding because of that wash. Great stuff. You see every single line. And it looks fantastic in my opinion. Quick look at the front. Beautiful. Excellent stuff. All in all, a fantastic ship, something I've been after since I was basically a teenager. And to finally have it in hand and it being done so well mold-wise, it's a real treat for me. So now let's put these ships on stands, compare them to other vessels, and then we'll be done. Now I know I just said we're going to put it on a stand, but look what just came in the mail, everybody. Oh boy, look at that. This is amazing. I'm totally geeking out now. I got to put the acclimator down. The venator looks beautiful. Look at this thing. Holy crap. Oh, I'm going to... I'm geeking out. Let's just, <laughs> whew, let's just get back to the video. So now let's put these bad boys on stands. Now, when it comes to the stands, this is just like every other Armada vessel we've seen thus far. We have our base, which I already assembled the shield dials. Just cardboard with a little peg. So that's pretty cool. So what you're going to want to do is take your ship token, put it on like so, and then you're going to take your pylon or your stand. And as you can see, there's a little crease right here, an angle. You're going to want to put that in the slot like so and push it up and you'll see it lock into position. Next, take your counselor ship, Peg it in the port like so. Now be gentle. This is very fragile and I'm afraid to even push it more than I have. It's supposed to go all the way in, but mine's a little tough and tight right there. So I'm just leaving it. So looking pretty good. And now putting the acclimator on its stand, it's the same as the counselor ship. We have a nice space. I already put the shield tokens on. Grab your ship token like so. Place it on. Take your pylon place it in the slot and don't forget to push it up to lock it in so this baby ain't going nowhere take your beautiful vessel and you're going to put that pylon into the port and just like that everybody you're good to go and now for a quick size comparison with the acclimator and counselor class ships seen in the center i have some imperial ones here first on the right hand side we have the victory class star destroyer and finally, on the left-hand side, we have the Imperial Star Destroyer, which is the Chimera. Very nice ships here. And now for an added bonus size comparison with the Acclimator or Counselor class ship seen in the center, I have more Armada vessels. First, on the right-hand side, we have the Imperial Light Cruiser right here. Next, we have the CR-90, which goes really close in size to the Counselor class. So I'm happy with that. And finally, on the left-hand side... We have Grievous' Invisible Hand. My God, the CIS flagship. Here it is. I never would have thought we would have had this with the Armada game, but it is beautiful. It looks pleasing, and I'm very happy to have that in my collection. Great stuff. And for the final size comparison, I have some more Armada vessels from the Clone Wars era. On the right, again, we have the Invisible Hand, the Counselor Class Charger, the Acclimator, and a ship that just came today, the Venator Class Star Destroyer. So all in all, these are some fantastic looking vessels, and if you would like to see reviews of anything I showcase today, check the links in the description below. So ladies and gentlemen, that does it today for my review of the Star Wars Armada Galactic Republic Fleet Starter Set, released in late 2020. Now, on the whole, I really like this expansion. I think it is a great idea. Now, when this first came out and I saw the price point, which is anywhere from uh, 
probably high 80s to $100, I was scratching my head and going, you know, Dave, for a couple dollars extra, I could just get the core set that has Imperials and Rebels, and then two people could play. But then I started thinking about it, and I could see where FFG and Atomic Mass Games is going with this, and I think I agree with them. I really do. Because think of it this way. If you wanted to go into a game shop and you wanted to play Armada. And you want it just to play Rebels. You don't care about any other faction. Well, to just start the game, you got to buy the expansion set. Which comes with Imperial stuff. And then it's just extra. With a set like this, it's everything you need for the Republic. And that's it. There's no odd pieces, no cards that don't go with any other ships. Everything is just Republic-based. And I like that because now moving forward, if I'm just using a Republic, now I could just buy Republic expansion sets and just add it to my fleet. Now I could see somebody out there throwing out a good point, which is, well, what happens if another faction has a card that would be beneficial to my faction, but I don't have it? Well, that's just the nature of the beast, you know what I mean? It's a company. They're going to do that. They're going to make money. They did it with the original Imperial and Rebels when I believe, uh, if memory serves me right, Phoenix Home came with Rapid Launch Bays or something like that. And all the Imperial players were like, we want that card. So they were buying Phoenix Homes. But now they're left with all these ships that they didn't really play with. So it was really interesting uh, for me, I buy all factions I can, as long as I have money to do so. So I have all the cards, but that's just because I'm a collector. I love the vessels. That's my thing. But anyway, I digress. In short, I do think that the faction starter sets are a decent idea for now. Uh, where FFG and Atomic Mass Games takes this method in the future is anyone's guess, but I do feel like it is in the right hands. So moving on, so like I mentioned, this set gives you everything you need to add one faction to your game of Armada, including dials, tokens, range rulers, maneuver tools, dice, and cards. Everything is there, and I think it's a great amount of stuff for what you're paying. Now true, most of it is cardboard, but there are companies that offer plastic pieces as well. Moving on, we also get four squadrons. As we saw, they are really well made. If you're good at painting and customizing, the world's your oyster there, my friend, because those things are awesome. Now, moving on from there, and the basically the pearl of this whole event for myself is the vessels, the counselor class and the acclimator. Now, sure, having a close-up look, the paint is a little iffy here and there, but looking at it from a distance and not super zoomed in, they look fantastic. So that's basically everything I have to say. Hopefully I covered everything. I know this was a very long video. And for those of you that are going through it, I do apologize. But I did have to talk about everything that comes in here because that's my job. To go through it so you don't have to and you could realize for yourself... Is it worth the money? Is it worth me picking up? So I hope I succeeded in that. So that's everything I have to say about this Republic Fleet Starter today. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. And if you want to see new videos every week, subscribe. Again, thank you very much to all of you who took time out of your busy schedule to watch my content. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.